Something very troubling is happening in Northern California. Over the past six months in the city of Palo Alto, four teenagers have taken their lives, all throwing themselves in front of commuter trains. And John Blackstone tells us all were current or future students at Gunn High School. Too often this year, the Silicon Valley commuter train that roars through affluent Palo Alto has become a terrible solution for troubled teenagers. The suicide on the tracks this week of a 16-year-old is the fourth in the past six months. All were enrolled in the same school, Palo Alto's top-rated gun high. Last night, some 400 anxious parents gathered at a community meeting. It's more than a coincidence now, you know, and I, I almost wonder if it's, it's starting to become this sort of some, some sort of a, like a siren call to kids who are in this area who are, who are not feeling well. But the search for ways to stop it has been going on since the first suicide in May. It is a cruel irony that despite all these efforts and our increasingly strong community outreach on this topic, that we haven't yet found a solution. Many worry that each suicide is planting seeds for the next. Some of the students are saying it's more of a trend thing because you can totally see um, kids are getting a lot of attention from this. The Centers for Disease Control estimates that as many as 5% of teenage suicides occur in clusters. The Palo Alto deaths all happen near the same rail crossing. With everybody jumping in front of the train, with all, all of the suiciders doing that, um, I, I think that does suggest that there is that phenomenon at work. The news media generally don't report suicides, but when the string of tragedies in Palo Alto sparked local news coverage, there was criticism that the reporting could bring more copycat deaths. By showing videos of the passing train, the loud train steaming down its corridor, um, we make that more accessible in the, in the minds of someone else who's feeling troubled or feeling depressed. Local media even got letters from the Annenberg Public Policy Center. We're not saying to censor the news, but we're asking the news media to think a little harder about what they report because by reporting it, they could be perpetuating the story. A community is wondering whether more information will bring difficult issues out of the shadows or just bring more tragedy. John Blackstone, CBS News, San Francisco.